today, May 14, 2012, South and Common Council is now in session. The invocation by the Reverend Sylvester Wood. Mr. President, I'm here on behalf of the Reverend Chaplain Tony Slagle, who had surgery on his back and now is in recovery. I'd like to offer this prayer in my tradition. Lord God of heaven, creator of heaven and earth, we come before your presence, Lord, this evening to ask your blessing upon this South Bend Common Council. Give each of these your chosen officials with wisdom and understanding and patience. Give them the strength and the fortitude to execute their duties as public servants in the interests of the people whom they serve. Grant them your spirit of guidance to decide and implement the correct course of action here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty, death, and for all. Sir John Horty, will you read the roll, please? John? Present. Mr. Henry Gaines. Henry Gaines. Mrs. Shea. Dr. Furley. Yes. Dr. Barnard. Present. Vice President Oliver Dick. Present. Dr. Member White. Present. Mr. Furley. Here. President Dean. Present, Mr. Horty. Nine. Present. Thank you. May I have a report from the subcommittee on minutes? The Common Council of the City of South Bend, the subcommittee has inspected the minutes of the April 23rd, 2012 meeting of the Council and found them to be correct. Therefore, we recommend the same be approved. Signed by Derek Dieter, David Burner. So moved. Second. Right, we have a motion, I guess, and a second on that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The opposition. Thank you. Now we proceed to swearing in of citizen members for the Personnel and Finance Committee. I'll introduce Clerk Wardy. Elaine James. If you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. Do solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Indiana. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of a citizen member of the Personnel and Finance Committee. So help me out. I would like to add that she is a recent graduate from IU South Bend with a master's degree in social work. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, honoring all police officers killed in the line of duty and declaring Friday, May 18, 2012, as a day of remembrance and dedication to all South Bend police officers and declaring May 14th through May 18th as Police Officers Memorial Week in South Bend. Thank you. The Chairperson of uh, Health and Public Safety, Dr. Fred Furlick, will read the resolution. Any officer who would like to stand with Dr. Furlick? Agree. Any police officers, please come up. William? 
up in the Roddy. Thank you, John. Whereas last year, 106 police officers were tragically killed in the line of duty, with these officers, including 155 men and 16 women, whose average age was 41 years, whose average years of service was 12 years, 9 months, which was an increase from 162 police officers deaths in 2010, reflecting a dramatic increase of 40% from 2009. And whereas the South Bend Common Council further recognized that on Friday, May 18, 2012, at 1.30 p.m., the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge number 36 will hold their annual tribute and memorial service at our police department headquarters in honor of all South Bend Police Department officers who have given their lives in the line of duty. On behalf of a grateful South Bend community, the Common Council honors these very, very special police officers. Hans Brandt. Fred Bulin, Oscar Christensen, Samuel Cooper, Paul DeGosh, Charles Farkas, Tom DeRue, Ronald St. German, Lewis Keller, Neil McIntyre, Nick Palazzato, Scott Lee Severns, Delbert Thompson, Lloyd Thompson, Howard Wagner. The Common Council rededicates itself to assisting the families and friends of each of our fallen officers and trying to help their families rebuild their lives and supporting our police officers serving on the South Bend Police Department today. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, as follows. Section 1. On behalf of all citizens of the City of South Bend, Indiana, the Common Council hereby publicly commemorates and gratefully honors each and every one of our 15 members of the South Bend Police Department who have made the ultimate sacrifice while serving and protecting the residents of South Bend, Indiana. Section 2. The South Bend Common Council honors each of our 15 fallen police heroes who have each had their 1042 called out. All of the South Bend Common Council members salute all the fallen law enforcement officers across the country and their family members, friends, and police department colleagues who have been left behind. Not because of the way each of them died, but rather because of the way each of them these dedicated police officers live and dedicated their lives and careers to their daily police duties and protecting people and property on a 24-7 basis. Section 3. The Common Council hereby declares May 14th to May 19th as Police Officers Memorial Week in South Bend, Indiana to coincide with National Police Week, which has been annually celebrated since 1962 when President John F. Kennedy designated that May 15th and the week in which it fell as Police Memorial Week. The Common Council urges all citizens to remember and thank those who have given their lives while serving as part of the thin blue line, stand between the lawful and the lawless. The Common Council further encourages everyone to honor our fallen heroes and their families and friends and thank our current police officers for their many services by attending the Police Officers Memorial Service on Friday, May 18th, 2012 at 1.30 p.m. at the South Bend Police Headquarters. Section 4. This resolution shall be enforced in effect from and after its adoption by the Common Council and approval by the Mayor. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone like to speak in favor of this? Good evening. My name is Steve Miller. I'm a police officer with the City of South Bend. I work out of the Central Station. At 701 West Sample, I'm also the president of the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge Number 36, which represents the men and women in South Bend Police Department. I would like to thank uh, the council members as well as Mayor Pete and his administration for recognizing the sacrifices that not only these officers have made, but the, their families as well, and the families continue to make. I'd also like to thank the council and the administration for the continued funding, support, and in supporting our efforts to suppress crime in the city of South Bend for its citizens and keep them safe. Right, thank you. Anyone else like to speak in favor or opposition? Council members, any comments? Mr. Scott. I just want to thank uh, all the officers that have served, all those that have fallen for their sacrifice, and you guys out there, and women, and Police canine. 
helping protect us. Um, I had a good friend, uh, Brian Verkler from Mishawaka, who was killed, and uh, absolutely true. I remember the, the days and the dedication that he had given us, and uh, same thing with South Bend. So thank you all. Yes, Council Member Shea. I would like to thank I would like to thank you all as well. Uh, I understand the, um, uh, the sacrifices that you all make on a day-to-day -day basis, working uh, long hours, uh, working weekends, holidays, nights, um, putting yourselves uh, on the front line of um, harm's way often. And I just want to say, as a resident of South Bend, I'm very grateful for what you all do on a daily basis. So thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from our council? You know, one, it isn't on the list that uh, technically it wasn't in the line of duty, but it was preparing for the line of duty. We remember Randy Moore, who died uh, from a broken neck while training, physically training, in his art of uh, jiu-jitsu, his own special way of that. So that's one of the persons that we also like to remember. So, Dr. Uh, Furlington, I guess you're signing this with a favorable recommendation. I said it's a favorable recommendation of the town. Thank you very much. Move we adopt this by acclamation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. And uh, also, as in my hair, I, I've uh, neglected uh, Reverend Wayne Coleman. Uh, in light of uh, Captain Ed Friend, who gave his entire life, his life was the South Bend Police Department, uh, we'd just like to take a, a short moment of silence for everything he did for the community. Thank you. We proceed to reports of city offices. This is a, uh, a section of the council that Several members have asked me, uh, and, and I checked with our council attorney, what, what this would be now. It would be a, a time when someone approaches the council uh, from a city office that they will be able to give us an update on things they have going. And we have also added question and answer uh, to that because there's several council members that had uh, wanted to get some questions and answers during this time as opposed to just a presentation. So at this night, Mayor Buttigieg will give up and talk to the council on some, probably some of his new hires and what he has going on. Terrific. Good evening. Uh, let me begin by saying that I uh, uh, very much welcome uh, the approach of using this uh, report to city offices uh, as an opportunity to uh, increase levels of formal communication uh, between the administration and the council so that everybody is uh, up to speed on our activity. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to bring you up to speed on uh, a number of things. Uh, first of all, I know that there was interest in the council in a progress report on uh, any of the impact of uh, council ordinance uh, related to uh, salaries uh, that uh, went through the council earlier this year. Uh, pleased to advise that 10 of the 12 positions that were affected by this ordinance are uh, now occupied ably. Uh, the position of uh, city controller uh, is held by Mark Neal. There was a salary uh, increase associated, a uh, salary cap increase associated with that position. Uh, another salary cap increase was associated with the position of city engineer. Uh, hope that you all have had a chance to get acquainted with our new city engineer, Mike Meekham. If not, please uh, let me know and we'll make sure that uh, that's possible. He is uh, coming up to speed and already uh, providing excellent service uh, in the Department of Public Works. Uh, the position of city attorney uh, was converted by the council. Uh, on, a, uh, on an hourly basis, there was not a salary increase, but because it was converted from full -time, uh, part time to full time, uh, the salary overall did increase uh, as far as the maximum. Uh, that position is now held at interim by Aladine DeRose Smithburn. Uh, we continue to work uh, on identifying and extending an offer to uh, someone for 
holding that job uh, permanently. It's one of the two uh, of the 12 that was addressed that uh, is not currently filled. Uh, the same goes for the next position, the Director of Public Works. Uh, if you will recall, this is the one position that I requested the council authorize a salary higher than that authorized for mayor, because I believe it's that important. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, a new city engineer up and running. Uh, we've also benefited tremendously from the uh, volunteer and consulting assistance of uh, former uh, Public Works Director Gary Jalot, and he's helping us in that regard uh, as we move, I hope, uh, uh, toward extending an offer uh, to a permanent candidate for that position in the near future. Uh, the position of Executive Director of Community and Economic Development, I'm very pleased to announce, has been filled uh, by Scott Ford. Uh, Scott uh, comes to us with uh, an extensive background in policy uh, development uh, and planning as well as architecture. Uh, he has uh, worked all over the country and the world, uh, and uh, that includes uh, seven years spent uh, in South Bend, um, and had the opportunity to uh, work with a former member here uh, of this body, uh, Carl King, uh, on an internship while he was uh, uh, reviewing uh, the city of South Bend and its planning as an object of academic study. Uh, Mr. Ford has also uh, worked in areas rec uh, ranging from uh, various uh, both coasts of the United States uh, to uh, post-Katrina New Orleans and brings a very unique perspective. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I know I uh, brought him around informally to meet the uh, most of the council members. We didn't find all of you, so I'm looking forward uh, to a chance uh, later on to be sure that uh, he gets to know you. He, uh, I know, is looking forward to working with the council, and I think you're going to enjoy working with him as much as I do. Uh, the position of Director of Human Resources uh, experienced a, uh, another increase uh, in order to create flexibility uh, in the salary for that position. Uh, the same move was made on the Director of Information Technology. Uh, both of those are occupied uh, by uh, Janice Hall and Bob Allen, respectively. Uh, the positions of assistant to the mayor were converted to chief of staff to the mayor, uh, which uh, is occupied by Mike Schmuel uh, with no increase in salary uh, from the assistant mayor position. Uh, and uh, the deputy chief of staff to the mayor position was created uh, by the council uh, out of the other assistant mayor position, again, uh, with no increase in salary, as occupied by Catherine Ruth. Uh, Matt Sikora has joined the team. Uh, in a position that was created by the council converting the director of secretarial services into the executive assistant and director of special projects uh, for the mayor's office. Uh, he's working very ably uh, in that uh, role without a uh, change in salary. Uh, the title of director of communications and special projects was changed by the council uh, to communications director. A uh, small change, again, one that did not include uh, a conversion in salary. Uh, that post is held by uh, Deborah Johnson. Uh, Deborah worked... Uh, previously as a journalist and brings those skills to her work as communications director in the mayor's office. Last but not least, uh, we asked the council to create the position of deputy city controller. Uh, John Murphy has stepped up very ably into that position. Uh, that uh, did include a salary increase from the finance director position that it was associated with previously, uh, and I believe that uh, the council will experience, if it has not already, many of the benefits uh, of that uh, step-up opportunity for Mr. Murphy as we uh, move into budget season. Uh, speaking of things the Council uh, did that have uh, yielded great results, I just want to note that uh, among many recent Council actions that are very much appreciated throughout the city, uh, the reauthorization of funds for the illegal dumping crew, a uh, partnership between code enforcement uh, and solid waste, uh, recently picked up its three millionth pound uh, of uh, trash. We know that uh, picking up things after they have been dumped is uh, not the entire solution. Uh, we need to work on the front end, too, to try to head off dumping. But certainly a number of constituents have contacted me and hopefully uh, contacted you to express their appreciation for the impact uh, of this program. Uh, I wanted to uh, also let you know that the uh, review of the Community and Economic Development Department uh, is now uh, mostly complete. We've uh, worked very hard with uh, individuals uh, interviewing individually each person uh, in the department as well as engaging a number of experts uh, to try to make sure that we had the best possible structure uh, and strategy as well as leadership uh, for the department going forward. Uh, and I will be uh, coming to the council uh, later on uh, this spring summer uh, requesting the council's assistance in what I aim to have as a budget neutral uh, adjustment uh, to the structure uh, of that organization. Uh, the intention is to then roll that out at an economic summit to be held in late June 
This will be an opportunity for us to communicate to uh, economic actors uh, and civic leaders uh, in this community who to call for what and how we are approaching not just to the city, but hopefully in partnership uh, with county, regional, and state organizations. Uh, the question of economic development, making sure we're geared up uh, to attract the jobs of the future. Uh, with that, I believe Q&A was uh, an important part of the intention for this report to city officers, and uh, happy to uh, answer uh, any questions that you have. And if I don't have an answer ready, uh, I will uh, do my best to uh, follow up and get one to you. All right. Uh, Mr. Scott. Um, Mayor, uh, how many salaries with the new cap have you reached or maximized that cap? Uh, I believe the answer is none. Uh, we uh, tried to uh, change the uh, approach that uh, we used to have. You recall that often it used to be considered a matter of course that uh, whatever maximum the council established, we would hire in uh, at that maximum. Uh, but uh, any of the salaries that were raised, uh, I believe on every one of them, uh, we have uh, left some headroom, uh, hopefully to grow, uh, as uh, incumbents in those positions uh, continue to demonstrate excellence. Thank you. Uh, Michelle? Uh, Mayor, in reviewing the um, department reports that uh, your department has prepared for us, which was very helpful, one um, report that I found very interesting, and I would love to hear your thoughts, um, was from the Community and Economic Development Department. Um, as you know, uh, all of us here on the council, as well as yourself, ran on economic growth and development and the need for um, the city to really move forward in that area. And I guess this is more of a statement, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, as a new council member, I found it very encouraging that um, in the short time that I've served on the council, we have already, including tonight's meeting, um, had eight abatements uh, come before the council um, for substantial investments and uh, job growth. And when I reviewed the uh, reports, from the Community and Economic Development Department for last year, I think we're already ahead of what, uh, what was filed for the entire year. Uh, I think there were four or five abatements filed uh, in 2011. So as a new council member, as somebody I'm hoping to uh, encourage my constituents when they ask me, you know, well, what are we doing in terms of economic growth and development, I've, I've stated to um, people that have asked me about that, I've stated, well, you know, we're already seeing promising signs of growth. We've had over $50 million worth of uh, investments come before the council um, for tax abatements. I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, find out if you're equally encouraged. Uh, yes, council member, that's a, a great point. Uh, we uh, noticed uh, the same uh, trend. It's very encouraging to see that uh, just year to date this year, uh, the level of investment in dollars, I believe it's north of $30 million associated with the tax abatement program already exceeds or is on pace to exceed uh, what we got in the whole year last year. Uh, it's certainly an indication in my view that there's something of a wind in the sails of the local economy and uh, something that I think it's uh, great for council members to point to if anybody's asking for encouragement. Uh, of course, this is uh, uh, only halfway into the year. It's, it's early uh, and uh, we can't uh, uh, say that we're out of the woods by any means when it comes to the local uh, or regional economy, but uh, I certainly take that as very positive news, and we'll be tracking that number as an indication of uh, continued local growth, especially on the commercial and industrial side. Thank you. Council Member White. Mayor, could you share with the council, uh, you had made notes that in the state of the city of New York that you have been meeting with the school superintendent, and maybe you can share with us uh, a little bit of, uh, about those discussions and in the direction that you see the city and the school administration Yes, uh, continue to try to keep uh, open lines of communication with the, uh, the school corporation and uh, do that, among other things, by making sure that uh, I have uh, regular pulse of meetings uh, with Dr. Schmidt. Um, recently, we came together not only in a meeting of the two of us, but uh, one that also involved a number of local employers. And the goal there was uh, really to pull together a number of the uh, local uh, businesses that say that they're struggling to fill open positions, even as we note that uh, there is a great deal of local unemployment. Uh, so we pulled together Dr. Schmidt along with Dr. Coley of Ivy Tech uh, and Greg Vollmer of Work One to uh, try to figure out where any of those gaps are. And hopefully we'll come out of that with uh, some direction as those conversations continue. Uh, the uh, meetings have not resulted in any formal initiative uh, that I would bring to council at this time. Um, they are uh, clearly under a level of budget pressure 
uh, much as, as we are. And so uh, there are questions about the uh, uh, resources that they're facing and, and wrestling with in the school corporation. Uh, I do think uh, over time, uh, one area of clear collaboration that's going to emerge uh, is making sure that uh, we're able to uh, address challenges among uh, the youth of the area. It seems to me an obvious area for collaboration between the administration uh, and the school corporation, and I think that uh, can't happen without leadership also from the council. Uh, and I may ask the council in the future to work with me to uh, visit areas where we might uh, want to consider proactively committing resources uh, to that effort, but uh, nothing formal or uh, articulated at this time. With all of the recent threats and challenges that we face in our community, um, what can you do to assure the people of South Bend that the city of South Bend is still safe? Well, uh, for one thing, I think we can demonstrate uh, how much of the community cares about the safety of our city. Uh, the, the number of people who have spoken up, uh, organized, pulled together uh, in their way, uh, in various different ways, uh, to come together shows at least that uh, we have no problem when it comes to awareness uh, or passion or commitment around the question of safety. Uh, I am not satisfied uh, with the level of violence that we have observed so far. Uh, we have not yet got to summer and uh, we'll have to uh, see uh, whether the spike in violence that was observed in the spring uh, is going to be a pattern that carries through the year or not. But of course we can't be content to wait and see what happens. And so uh, we're ensuring, uh, among other things, that we double down on the city's commitment to community policing. Uh, one uh, uh, thing that happened just today uh, was uh, as part of the uh, Weed and Seed program, spent some time at the uh, Measle Primary Center where there's a really inspiring partnership uh, between uh, police officers uh, and kids. Just trying to make sure that the kids, uh, often in the neighborhoods most affected by this issue, uh, are aware that uh, they can regard police officers as their friends, that officers are there to help them to try to build uh, that level of trust. Uh, I will also be uh, participating in the, the walk with a cop effort. The idea here is to make sure the police officers are spending time uh, outside of the car and actually uh, in engaging in the neighborhoods and the areas uh, that they uh, are sworn to keep safe. And in order to signal uh, my own support for this program, uh, it's uh, something that I'll uh, get out and do myself with an officer. Um, and uh, it might be something that uh, council members would find an interesting uh, way to participate too. Uh, of course, it's not only law enforcement. We, we, it's, it's, a, it's a whole community effort, all hands on deck. Um, but those are some of the areas where we're most concentrated in order to make sure people feel safe. I thank you for that because um, sometimes when you um, hear everything, you know, it's, you don't want to know any crime is, is too much crime. Okay? Um, but the concern I know of some has been that with the nature of what's been going on, that we can easily move into a police state in terms of a city with um, different people being targeted and challenges and the trust of everything going on right now is still in the process of growing. And so what assurances that you have while we are attempting to address our violence and the challenges that this will not turn into a police state when people are unduly pulled over and everything else because I know there's a push for um, getting more ticketing. However, how is that going to be done in an appropriate way for all groups are being treated fairly. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as, as you correctly observed, we, we cannot police our way out of this problem. It's uh, really a community-wide issue to make sure that we are safe. Uh, of course, we are working very hard to make sure that uh, trust uh, between the police department and uh, citizens is reinforced. Uh, I do believe that uh, the effort to increase traffic enforcement will uh, bear fruit when it comes both to traffic safety uh, and a broader sense of, uh, of uh, police presence. Um, if there are any indications that uh, there are any even appearances uh, that this policy is being applied unfairly, uh, I would like to know about it right away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mayor Mooney, Judge, I appreciate you coming before us. Um, really quick before I get to the crux of what I want to say, um, I heard you say something about working with Dr. Smith over at the Southern Union School Corporation. There, um, I, I uh, followed a trail uh, through Michigan and then in the back up with Dr. Smith here in South Bend, uh, there was a program, Michigan Job Works program, uh, that would probably uh, work really well here. Uh, I was working at it and I just came to the and I don't, you know, have myself to work on some of these things. But what I'm going to implore you to do, uh, if this is within your scope, that 
that program we looked at. She worked on that program in the Harbor area and allowed a lot of the students that were in high school to go to summer school and obviously receive some residual income for attending high school and doing other things outside of the high school or summer school day. So that's some community projects or some uh, community service uh, things uh, or, or just a, a job uh, working in someone's mail room. So uh, as you are working and continuing the conversation with Dr. Smith, uh, maybe you can get a little further in the conversation with her on that. Uh, I can get anywhere. But uh, maybe that is something that she probably can uh, facilitate and see if it can actually happen here in South Bend. It's not the silver bullet, but it's start. start. Um, on another note, I'm a bit uh, perplexed um, and, and a bit unhappy. Uh, and I think I expressed my discontent by walking out of the meeting earlier. Um, um, I'm looking at a document, and then I have another document as well. And I'm going to first start off by saying the word order. I think I said that probably about 17 times earlier today, order. Um, as a council member, um, there's a, a level of respect that I think all of my colleagues expect to have and receive um, when approached by a member of the community or even, for this matter, a department head. And when we have the opportunity to have a kind of a, a fluid dialogue between a, a, a department head and, and a council member, Myself being a council member, I don't expect the department head to question me, you know, on what I'm doing to police the community. I'm not the police chief. That's the police chief's job. Now, I could participate in the conversation of getting an idea, or perhaps situation, or even um, perhaps even like advocating for more dollars if there's a program that needs more funding. But my job is not to police the community. I do my fair share of mentoring knocking on doors, community service projects, the whole nine, and, but that's not what we're talking about back there. We we're talking about the uh, job uh, of a police chief. And I expect, and, and I will even respect, if the police chief was in, in, in a position to answer those questions without uh, getting a bit agitated or even defensive about what his job title requires him to do. Uh, he gets paid for the job. This is what I get paid to be a council person. So when I ask the question about the functions of a police department, I expect that the person who is being paid to do that job to be able to answer that question. If they can't, maybe we can talk about it later on. And I don't think that that's uh, a far-fetched idea. I don't think that that's asking for too much. I think that that's probably what's required as a, a city employee in that position. And so I, I went a little further with it and said, the discussion was open because of the recent violence and a lot of it has happened in District 2. And as a result, I thought about how uh, a police officer's job is, I think it's a very dangerous job, very dangerous job. Anytime a police officer is called, it's probably because something bad is happening. It's not because they want to give them roses and cancer. But what I'm going to get at is since we've talked about this in this situation, I went into uh, some research mode to figure out how many officers that we have and we have 250 officers. Out of the 260, we have 239 that are male and 21 female. Um, out of that breakdown, as far as the ratio of breakdown, one is an American Indian, another one is an Asian American. 28 are African American, 12 are Hispanic, 216 are Caucasian. Now we can go down to the ranks. Fourteen total, captain above ranks are fourteen. One you have in positions of authority is an African American who happens to be the person who was just demoted. So as far as the decision making calls, we just, we just ended up with one as an African American. Because we talked about African American boys and you know, young young adults and so we're going to say African American for right now. Um, lieutenants is nineteen, we have six African Americans, sergeants, we have eight African Americans, corporals we have zero. And non ranking, we have 28 African Americans. Something's wrong. Something that's that, that's a typo. It's eight, I think. That's a typo. So, anyhow, anyway, what I'm getting at is if we're going to work at this thing together as a community, allow us to do what is within our scope. You know, all the other things that we're talking about are extra added on things, 
and probably are as a result of what's going on here. But if we maximize what we are supposed to do here at this level, and maybe we don't have these conversations later on with a bigger fail for uh, another community advocate who wants to see better in their community. So what I'm asking you know, is that we participate at that level before we get way out there in the middle of the ocean and forget that there's some foundational issues that need to be taken care of. And one of the foundational issues is racial sensitivity. And why don't we have more of a balance, whether they're uh, Latino or African American or some uh, ethnic background, in high, higher ranking positions within the uh, office, officer rank. And then also, why don't we have better officers that are working the late midnight shift versus during the day shift? Most of the problems that occur in the city of South Bend happens during when nightfall happens. Rookie cops potentially don't necessarily know how to defuse a situation like a 30 year veteran would have, uh, would know how to. I could be assuming the wrong thing, but I'm, I'm guessing that experience does matter when you're dealing with police officers and, and, and community. So, you know, I, I just have a, you know, a really, really difficult time. I also received another document as well that I have here, and, and, and it deals with the uh, officer that we were talking about. And, and I want to discuss this with you. Uh, as your appointment, because I think there's some sensitivity issues that need to be looked at. I think it's quite insensitive, and it's a minority police officers association of South Bend that are plaintiffs versus the city of South Bend that took place in the early 80s, which includes some of the officers that are in higher ranking positions now that I think that we need to really talk about when we're talking about sensitivity and working with the African American males, because this just says minority police officers association, so I'm assuming that minority probably would say that either they're female, African-American, or Latino, but I'm probably going to guess that they're African-American men. So I think that there is some things that we really need to look at that are foundational before we begin this plethora of ideas and creative abuses that are going to rectify a long-standing issue in the community. It didn't get here overnight. It's not going to be corrected overnight. But we need to get back to the foundation of the issue. Right. And those are my comments. Right. Do you want to respond to that? or uh, Sure, just a couple of thoughts in response to that. One, I appreciate uh, the thoughts you offered earlier about uh, order and, and the way uh, uh, that we can best interact in order to um, approach the council. I, I think that uh, when the efforts in the community, uh, when and if the efforts in the community around youth violence uh, lead to uh, a call for formal action by government, uh, especially if it involves the commitment of any resources. Uh, that's something that uh, needs, uh, as you suggested earlier, uh, to come uh, by an initiative uh, offered by the administration brought to the council uh, for the council to decide whether to act. And uh, I think uh, there may be a lot of value in us exploring that approach. Um, I also want to just make clear that certainly uh, our administration's goal for uh, any city department, and uh, especially for the police department, uh, is to move toward a reality in which it reflects uh, the richness and the diversity of South Bend. It's an important part of how we can build uh, trust uh, between police officers and relationship uh, between police officers and the community they serve. Um, we have been uh, working, and the police department has been working for some time, largely to move toward this goal through uh, intensified recruiting efforts to try to make sure that uh, more people uh, are attracted to apply uh, to the department. Um, uh, who uh, represent uh, underrepresented uh, uh, minorities. Uh, I would certainly welcome any suggestions from the council. Uh, uh, should any members have any other thoughts on uh, how best to move us closer to that goal? I think it's a goal that we absolutely all share. I think that uh, our community in many ways is being tested uh, by this challenge uh, of youth violence, and it's going to test our ability to come together and hammer out an approach that may or may not involve governments or other citizens' groups in uh, varying degrees. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, lines along which we're used to dividing uh, that uh, may come between us and achieving this goal. Um, but I have great confidence in, in South Bend, and I have great confidence in uh, South Bend's leaders, including the elected leaders of uh, this council, uh, to make sure that we do, in fact, make tangible progress uh, toward a safer, uh, happier, healthier city. Well, you know, I'm sorry, President Leader. Uh, you know, again, it's just this. Young black males being murdered, senselessly, is not a test. It's an indictment. It's not a test. They didn't get their lives back. Their families are not growing because of it. The community suffers from it. 
So it's not a test. It's not a test. It's a mandate and it's an indictment against what we probably haven't done. It's not a test. Great, thank you. Um, I think Dr. Varner. Um, Mr. Mayor, a um, couple of things that I would like for us to just um, come back on. Um, we voted in our budget last year to have money for the bridge that is by the Croc Center. And um, a lot of people are saying, okay, the Croc Center is up and going and flowing, but the bridge has not been done. Even the person who presented one of those here is here. And um, we need to have... Um, that done, or at least an update as when is that going to be done as soon as possible. As earlier I stated, we will be having on our next um, meeting, but I'd at least like to again share it with you. Um, when I was at the Run Village Association meeting, um, our, they were concerned about the fire station that was being built on the um, Pur Prairie yeah. Avenue, and I was told that um, everybody's been excited over there about a new fire station we we're planning to get, and then they were said that we are not going to get a new fire station to this one fix the other and move on with life, and that was against what everybody had planned for. So if you could give us some headway with that, and also with the Ewing Avenue project over there, um, the infrastructure is very dangerous when you look at coming off this um, uh, subway, the gas station right over there, and um, it's about five different, when you come out of there, it's by a church, the Church of God in Christ Church, right the Revelation. It's right in there, the subdivision. You come out of that little section there, it's, 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 it's very dangerous. And people in the past administrations have come out to the number of the like, stuff down and said, we're going to get work on this, we're going to work on this. Some of the people who are at those meetings now are deceased. The other ones are there sitting there thinking they're going to be deceased and, um, before anything's done. And so they gave me an earful last week. And so, which, and right so, because I'll be right down there myself. And, we're all dealing with that. I hope I'm not the senior citizen sitting in the room. <laughs> so I think that's the next generation who are wondering what's going to happen with that fire station, what's going to happen with the UN Avenue. And again, we have this bridge that is now becoming the bridge to nowhere, and we need to get it done. So I appreciate that, Councilman. I will uh, investigate uh, those three issues and uh, provide an update for the next available opportunity. I appreciate that. Okay, I've okay. got. A lot of questions and comments, but we're not going to go into that because we don't have enough time. Just real quickly, in regards to the measles and we can see things, who, who was there today and what was talked about? Uh, there was a uh, pizza party for third and fourth graders. Uh, they had uh, created coloring books uh, to kind of cap off uh, their program. A number of uh, members of the police department were there, uh, led by Lieutenant Dick Powers, who's uh, been doing terrific work in community policing, as well as a number of uh, other officers who've been participating. Um, uh, Dr. Smith was also on hand. And uh, it was a great opportunity to uh, just recognize some of the partnerships uh, that have emerged in our community. Well, it, uh, we'll talk about that. I'm going to meet with you and the other administrative staff on some of the things that Council Member Davis talked about, uh, one in, in regards to the rank structure there uh, at the police department, and then certain things like we talked about at the town hall meeting and, and the weed and seed uh, Stuff. So I appreciate uh, your time and, and all those questions and any other things that you need to follow up with us or us with you will be certainly uh, get a hold of you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, um, the mayor did talk about um, the issue regarding the um, uh, the reauthorization of the um, for money for the. Uh, Abandoned homes? I mean, not, 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 what was an abandoned home? Vacant and abandoned homes. Trash pickup. Trash pickup. Thank you. Legal dumping. Legal dumping, thank you. When is that? That's coming to near to the end, and then, um, June. June. Will that be coming back before us again, or to I continue? It would be back in the budget. Pardon me? I would assume it would be back in the budget. Okay. So let's to continue that. So that won't, that's not going to stop them doing it, is it? I would hope that they would continue that program. And it took us two years to get to the point that we had such a program. And based on um, feedback from the citizens as well as from the administration, I would trust that we see this particular initiative being part of the budget. Okay. But I think it's funny just for one year from now. Yeah, because it's... So we yeah. Yeah, that's that. yes, so I have a motion. I have a motion resolving for me to move. Second. All in favor of that. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 
ठीक है अल्लाह का बात कर रहा
Public hearing on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending Chapter 2, Article 8, by the inclusion of South Bend Municipal Code, by the inclusion of new Section 2-123.2, addressing regulations and reporting mechanisms on city usage of alternative fuels, addressed natural gas, CNG, and liquefied natural gas, LNG, and related energy efficiency. Thank you, Mr. Gordy. Is there a committee report? Yes, Madam Chair, the Public Works and Property Vacation Committee had a public hearing on Bill 1512 this afternoon. Comes to council with a favorable recommendation. I do know that we have a petitioner and a sponsor of this particular bill. I do ask the person to give your name and address for the record and to give us a brief summary. Of oh, the certainly. And thank you, Council Member White. Uh, Henry Davis, uh, Jr., uh, 5117 Out of Wood Drive, South Bend, Indiana. Oliver Davis, Jr., um, 1801 Nash Street. Yes, um, the bill, bill that we have before us is 1512. And what we did and what I've asked is that uh, we begin our policies for clean and fuel, uh, energy policies that reduce our uh, carbon footprint. Uh, we've done a resolution in the past, uh, a couple months ago, maybe, when we uh, actually began the process of talking about how can we reduce our carbon pr footprint, but also reduce the cost of government and government services. And so uh, we'll move a step further into this, and we're now, and before you have a ordinance or a bill that will hopefully become an ordinance at the end of today, showing some measuring tools and some things that we can do to adopt the policies that are necessary to move into using natural gases for our vehicles. Uh, during the committee hearing, uh, you realize that there was a, a spreadsheet that was handed, and I hope you still have it, and it showed using up to 16 vehicles, uh, heavy vehicles, that will obviously will be uh, being used as a model in order to show where we can cut costs at. Uh, Gavin, you were right, it was a cumulative. It wasn't necessarily yearly. But what we found out throughout the uh, next several years with the 16 vehicles that are listed on this particular piece of paperwork, you will find that we're cutting our costs by uh, 300000 plus. And so given the fact that we have the opportunity to use more um, more vehicles such as police cars or uh, I think they don't do fire trucks because they're too large, but other uh, uh, vehicles that we use because we have 1,100 vehicles in our fleet in total, uh, we will be able to start cutting the cost of government services and lock in a rate that obviously will be more beneficial to the longevity of our budget process uh, again, our carbon footprint, we talked about earlier as well, is that we have one of the worst air qualities in the United States of America. And so hopefully by using some of these policies and adopting this policy, we will be able to live a cleaner, healthier society, and our pockets will be a little bit larger as well. <laughs> so I definitely uh, implore you uh, to obviously vote for this piece of legislation so we can begin the process of uh, uh, using uh, natural gas, compressed natural gas, uh, here in South Bay, Indiana. Thank you. Key point that I would like to keep on, I would like to add in is the semi annual reporting as you have had in your notes here. Um, this would help us to be able to partner with other entities such as the South Bend Community School Corporation, St. Joe County, City of Mishawaka, Transpo, and other entities who that have vehicles that have fleets aimed at reducing energy demand in summary. Also looking at a summary of all alternative fuels, grants purchased and pursued in this area, and the summary of other works with the U.S. Department of Energy Clean Cities Organization, such as Greater Indiana Clean Cities Coalition and South Shore Clean Cities. All of these are in the efforts to work with these different entities so we can all work together to be able to deal with um, options as it relates to saving costs and monies in the future. All of it's not recouped in one year, but it's over time, and we'll look at how that can be done with all of us working together in collaborative efforts. Thank you. Council members, do you have any questions for the petitioners? Again, thank you so much. We'll now move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone safe in is there anyone present wishing to speak in favor of Bill 15-12? We're so we ask that you come to the podium, state your name and address. My name is Samuel Brown. I live at 222 East of Street, South Indiana. Um, I agree with you that the way gas is to look for alternative fuel. 
32 and a half years, I worked for a company called Nitsco. Fortunately, I didn't blow myself up. Uh, we lost a police officer uh, at his home north of town. He was not as fortunate as I was. This is a volatile fuel. The training it takes for your employees, the regulators and stuff when they're fueling this vehicle, call Nitsco up and ask them to send you a tape on what happened to us down in the port. We had a young man that was fueling up this vehicle. Uh, a regular function on his truck. And luckily he was lazy enough to be off goofing off. He went where he was supposed to be to save his life. So when the case left the uh, municipal facility, they landed at a bowling alley about four or five miles away. Come through the roof and almost took out a guy that was cleaning the bowling alley. So if you go to this natural field, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I'm all for it. But the training for your employees is going to be essential because it's dangerous. And don't take it lightly. I hope that you would do a lot of research on it because the fuel is nice, but the training portion of this is very serious. So please, contact the experts and make sure all your employees go through the training. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Is there anyone else? Present wishing to speak in favor of this bill. Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing portion is not full. Can I just one thing? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gajalak said something that I like to highlight. As we look at utilizing these alternative fuels in the future, as we do our construction and other places where these vehicles will be stored and housed, um, that when we um, will also have to consider adapting our buildings and adapting our facilities to meet the demands of what the new um, fuel um, safety requirements will be. I know that we had to do the same thing when we looked at designing transfer with all of the latest issues and everything else as we talk about building our garage. And we wanted to look in the future, so every 10 years you have to build a new garage, so you can't afford that. So looking down the road as we look at keeping our city green and looking at all those issues that we will have to look at that in our public works areas of life down the road as we look at our budgets in the future. So I think that will address issues that Mr. Brown has raised in that his complaint. Thank you. Council Member Yes, I'd like to clarification from our council. I believe when we talked about the committee meetings, this is just a reporting entity of the resolution correct or not approving this type of fuel or not advocating this type of fuel. The, the ordinance correct? creates a seven specific areas that uh, the administration <coughs> updates with the key people being the director of public works, the energy director, as well as uh, uh, Mr. Chabosky. So, But again, uh, as far as the next step that uh, both Council Member Davis's have, have addressed, that would be part of the budgetary process where there would be right. much more discussion. This is for clarification for the audience. We are not voting tonight on a, a few of our terms. Yeah. But one thing I want to, I'm, may I, one thing I want to explain <coughs> is to make sure that we're going for a cultural change. And hopefully that is the end result of what we're proposing tonight. I think that, you know, yes, we need to probably use more natural gas. However, it may be a little bit dangerous, but what is it? You know, uh, so uh, I'm not diminishing what Mr. Brown said. I'm not diminishing what you were saying. However, there is, it needs to be a, a complete change of culture in how we do business here, and therefore we're working and working towards administration obviously has the ability to say yes or no to this piece of legislation, just like anything else that is in our books. But what I am going for, what we are should be going for, is making sure that our budget uh, reflects good practices, and this will obviously reflect the good practice of the council on making sure and to ensure better budgeting practices as it relates to alternative fuel. Any other questions, comments? Would now like to entertain a motion regarding Bill 15-12. Make a motion we uh, move this favorably to full council. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor that Bill 15 12 will be sent to full council with a favorable recommendation. I hear your vote. Aye. 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 Those opposed, 
the motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Vorty, will you please the second reading to uh, Bill 16-12. Public hearing on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, authorizing the execution of an amendment to the lease with the City of South Bend Building Corporation, dated as of April 1, 2003, as amended, previously entered into for the construction and equipping of a new central fire station and renovating and expanding the police station and regarding certain related matters. Is there a committee report? Dr. Farmer? Uh, the committee did meet, and uh, I'd like to uh, uh, address Mark Neal, please. Well, we sent a first table response, and Mark Neal was saying. Thank you. At this time, we do have a petitioner, city controller, Mr. Mark Neal. Thank you, Councilmember Wood, Mark Neal, city controller. Um, the, the ordinance, you, proposed ordinance you have in front of you is that in 2003, the council had approved and authorized the issuance of sale and sale by the City of South Bend Building Corporation uh, first mortgage revenue bond to finance the cost of the construction and equipping of a new central fire station and the renovation expansion of the police station. And from that, the city then previously entered a lease agreement between the building corporation and the city. Uh, as I noted earlier today, the opportunity presented here is uh, in a refunding, think of it as a refinancing, um, our financial advisors have identified an opportunity for us to refund these bonds in order for us to save on interest costs for the remaining life of the bonds. The, uh, the building corporation issued those bonds in 2003 for $21.335 million. The current balance outstanding is $14,505,000. Uh, we would ask that the, the council allow the building corporation to refund or refinance those prior bonds and permit the city and the building corporation to reduce the lease rentals payable by the city under the terms of lease with the building corporation. Uh, the uh, ordinance goes on to, to request your approval for us to take any and all action necessary to affect that, uh, this refunding, and we will only do so if it is in the financial interests of the city and in saving at least $450,000 net of the, uh, of, in net of the refunding. Thank you so much. Prior to asking if there's any questions that council members might have, I, uh, council member uh, Derek Dieter would like to uh, share and make a statement of disclosure at this time. On the advice of the account, my council attorney, as a matter of fact, uh, I'd like to declare that as a the department since 1975. And if this resolution is passed, I will receive, receive no financial assistance. Thank you, President Dieter. Are there any questions, uh, Council Member Shane? Um, thank you, Mark, for presenting this tonight. I just wanted to clarify, um, and thank you for looking at creative ways to save the city and the taxpayers' money. So um, that's fantastic. I just wanted clarification. I was trying to take notes while we were discussing this earlier today. Yes. And, um, I had thought the, the savings over time by refinancing these bonds would be closer to a million dollars? That's correct. The analysis that we had done in March and our financial advisor, uh, there are certainly volatility or changes in the interest rates uh, daily in the marketplace, but they continue to believe that the original analysis that they've done uh, is still, uh, we think, uh, at least 750000 to $800,000. It could be as much as a million. Um, but right now, we would say the market would indicate probably seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred thousand dollars of net savings once all the costs were expensive for paid. And um, and bear with me, uh, that's over the life lifespan. That's correct. The remaining the remaining ten years of the bonds. So. Ten years. Okay. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Thank you. <coughs> At this time, we we'll move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in favor? Bill 16-12. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this bill? Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing is now closed. I can a motion. Favor second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of that bill, 16-12, will be sent to the full council with favorable recommendation. I hear your vote. Aye. Those opposed to the motion. 
here. <laughs> I would not entertain a motion to rise. So move, second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, I hear you vote. Uh, All right. Those opposed, the motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> First, John Forty. Twenty third, fourteen twelve. Third reading on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending Chapter Two, Article Three, Section Two Dash Twelve Point Three of the South Bend Municipal Code, addressing procedure for addressing citizen appointment. Move and pass it to fourteen twelve. Second, Forty. <coughs> Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furley. Aye. Dr. Varner. Aye. Vice President Oliver Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furley. Aye. President Davis. Aye. Nine aye. 1512. <coughs> Third reading on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending Chapter 2, Article 8, by the inclusion of South Bend Municipal Co Code, by the inclusion of new section 2-123.2. Addressing regulations and reporting mechanisms on city usage of alternative fuels, compressed natural gas, and liquefied natural gas, and related energy efficiency. Over the passage of 1512. Second. Supporting. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furley. Aye. Dr. Vernon. Aye. Vice President Oliver Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furley. Aye. Mr. Scott. Hi. President Hi. Nine nine. Thank you. Sixteen twelve. Third reading on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, authorizing the execution of an amendment to the lease with the City of South Bend Building Corporation dated as of April first, two thousand three, as amended, previously entered into for the construction and equipping of a new central fire station and renovating and expanding of the police station and regarding certain related matters. Move for passage of Bill 16-12. Second. Good Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furley. Aye. Dr. Varner. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furley. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. President D. Aye. Nine aye. Thank you. On some resolutions, may have a motion to continue 1237. <laughs> an economic revitalization area for purposes of a five-year personal property tax abatement for R2 Diagnostics, Inc. Thank you. Committee report. Community, community economic development. I'm sorry. Um, community economic um, development uh, committee met this afternoon, and we brought 1238 to the full council for federal recommendations. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> With your name and address and a uh, short synopsis of your project. Good evening. My name is Jeff McGowan. I am a CPA with Kugel Larkin CPAs, uh, 210 South Michigan and South Bend, Vienna. I'm here with uh, Mike Morris, who is the owner of R Squared Diagnostics, as well as uh, other companies uh, known as uh, Enzyme Research. Uh, R squared is proposing to purchase equipment in the amount of roughly $460,000. And uh, with that equipment, it will create two new permanent jobs uh, with an annual salary of uh, roughly $65,000. And it will also maintain 15 existing permanent full-time jobs uh, and one existing part-time jobs which represents an annual payroll of $800,000. And uh, as we spoke in uh, committee this afternoon, that um, 
uh, Mr. Morris and his uh, entities of Enzyme and uh, R squared, uh, and the real estate uh, entity MJ Morris and Properties uh, has been a, a good uh, corporate citizen for the community and pays an excess of fifty thousand dollars per year in real and personal property tax. And uh, instead of trying to uh, talk about coagulation, I thought I would let Mr. Morris speak briefly about what the uh, proposed equipment will do. Hi, I'm Mike Morris, uh, 3410 Meadow Hill Road here in South Bend is the address. Uh, what we'll be doing with this equipment is it's an expansion uh, automation of our delivery system or filling, uh, filling station for filling small vials with uh, diagnostics. So we're in the uh, detection of bleeding and clotting disorders. So what our plan is is to be able to put in some automated filling lines and allow us to fill millions of vials uh, a year and, and do work for expand our current business and uh, bring in some other business from other companies that have asked us to do some of filling for them. Thank you. Any thank you. Questions from the council? No. Uh, thank you for your investment to our community again. Well, thank you. Right. Anyone like to speak in favor? Anyone in opposition? Council members, may I have a recommendation? I move for the adoption of 1238. Second. Mr. Wardy. Dr. Perlick. Aye. Dr. Barner. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Perlick. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. President <laughs> Peter. Uh, aye, aye. Greg, thank you. It's been a long way since the old Sears uh, warehouse parts store there, so appreciate all your good work. Thank you very much. Thank you. 1239, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, designating certain areas within the City of South Bend, Indiana, commonly known as 3605 West Cleveland Road, an economic revitalization area for purposes of a five-year personal property tax abatement for Federal Mobile Power Train, Inc. Committee report. The Committee Economic Development uh, Committee met this afternoon. We sent 1239 to the Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good evening. I'm Trent Rock. I'm the plant manager for Federal Mobile's uh, South Bend Simpson <laughs> Operations. And um, we're located at 3605 West Cleveland Road. I have some notes here that I, I wanted to share with you to frame up what we do and why I'm here. Uh, our plant is part of Federal Mobile's Powertrain Group, which is a global manufacturer of engine components for the automotive, heavy-duty, and small engine market. Our plant here in South Bend represents $100 million in revenue of Federal Mobile's roughly $6.5 billion in revenue. We employ 400 employees. And uh, for 25 years now, we've been one of the premier piston manufacturers in the world. Uh, this investment that we're about to put in is $22 million. It will underwrite uh, our future development in new business and new technologies, bringing a half million of that into our new prototyping center, which will establish our plant as the uh, central manufacturing facility for all prototypes globally for Federal Mobile's piston operations. And right now, our... Uh, Straight line employment with uh, this investment we will be at least 20 employees. That's the folks that we would hire to run just the new equipment uh, at current market volume. If those volumes do uh, increase, as we expect them to do over the course of the next few years, back to more traditional automotive levels in North America, it could uh, uh, triple or even more than that, uh, quadruple that number in a very short period of time. And uh, our request is for an abatement to help uh, establish us as a competitive global manufacturer of pistons for 25 more years here in South Bend. All right. Thank you. Any questions from council? I've just got a couple. Of, uh, what's the average salary of your 400 employees, roughly? Uh, on the hourly side, it's about $18 an hour. Uh, overall, about uh, $27 an hour when you include the salary, folks. And then the well, rough point is about $20 million in, uh, in payroll. This will represent about a million increase on that. And the level of uh, an incoming employee, would they have, have some type of vocational skill employees coming in? That number of 20 includes both salary folks as well as, uh, as hourly. So we'll be looking primarily for machinists and foundry operators 
uh, on the operational side, as well as skirt counters, anodizers, and assemblers uh, in our operation. We'll also be hiring uh, engineers and uh, operational folks too to oversee those new those new operations. Because that's one of the things that we've been discussing in conjunction with the city of South Bend of vocational places. I know that uh, the you do a good job of training people and your, your business would be a perfect spot for those people. I so appreciate that. All right, thank you. Anyone like to speak? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to say I uh, thank you for being such a good corporate citizen. I have a good friend that works at Federal Mogul, and she feels it's an excellent company. Um, your company has um, done very – she's done very well with your company. Um, I thank your company for sticking it out while the uh, American uh, auto industry certainly was having all its trouble, and it's um, wonderful to see as uh, the American auto industry really rebounds as we see more – Fords and uh, GMs on the road, um, we know that uh, your pistons will be in those vehicles. So um, thank you for all that you do and be such a good corporate citizen. You're very welcome. South Bend has been a great home for us for <coughs> 25 years, so we, we appreciate all the support we get from you folks. Yeah. And again, another fabulous company in the first district. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, for your role. Um, I also work for Tier 1 Automotive Supplier and I know the future is looking pretty good for automotive, but I love the fact that we can say here in Indiana and in America that a global leader uh, in the automotive industry. So keep up the good work. Appreciate it. Well, Dean, thank you. It's kind of like Aaron Rogers stepping in the Brett Farm, isn't it? That's right. Okay, good job. <laughs> Anyone like to speak in favor, Brett? A little bear analogy here, not the Packers. Anyone in opposition? <laughs> Council, may I have a recommendation? I'm moving for the adoption of um, Bill Number 1239. Second. Mr. Vorty. Dr. Barnard. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furlick. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furlick. Aye. President Davis. Aye. Nine aye. Thank you very much. Appreciate all the good work. Thank you. We appreciate all the work. Have a good night. 34, please. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, approving an agreement extending the St. Joseph County Housing Consortium and authorizing the execution thereof. Committee report. Community Economic Development uh, Committee members have known, and we send 1234 worth of favor recommendation. Okay. Uh, this time I'd like for our council to make a disclaimer. Um, while this doesn't directly tie to the funds of my wife's nonprofit, she does receive homeworks and CGB funding that is administered through this. Um, I've been told by council I can vote on this. It doesn't directly uh, pertain to the funding my wife would receive at the near Northwest neighborhood. And your wife is the executive director of the NNA. Correct. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anything else? I'm good. Pam Meyer, uh, Community and Economic Development with offices on 12th floor of this building. Um, the resolution before you will authorize the mayor to sign a document that renews the St. Joe County Housing Consortium along with the City of Mishawaka and St. Joe County. And this renewal will be for a period of three years. It will allow those three entities to receive uh, federal home funds, which is primarily for housing of low and moderate income individuals. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. All right, thank you. Any questions from the council? No, I just wanted to say a couple of comments again, and I hope that we'll be able to uh, move forward in this conversation. I don't mean to be a dead horse, um, but I wanted to make sure that we are in full understanding that there needs to be a level of transparency and also an understanding of what goes on with these housing consortiums and the dollars that we've received from the hood. Um, in the past, I've never I've advocated for the same level of discussion. We've never really had that level of discussion. And I hope with the adoption or the soon to be adopted, hopefully it is adopted, uh, 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 MBE, WBE uh, consultants and, um, and how we're working at making sure that we're hitting the levels that we're supposed to, meaning local hiring uh, minority businesses, uh, that we can become a better city in administering these grants and making sure 
that those who are within the areas given uh, are at first at the table or even at the table when the dollars are being uh, uh, divided up or the dollars are being given up as well. And so uh, as a result of the level of conversation I wanted to have before this uh, actually was heard on council floor, uh, and because I didn't, you know, get that conversation, I'm not in favor of this, but I hope that we'll be able to thereafter, uh, after this week or when you come back, we can have a little discussion so that the whole entire community actually knows and we actually know more as council people about what happens, you know, during the grant process and uh, uh, making sure that the levels, the procurement and the contracts and the whole nine are being hit uh, at the levels they're supposed to. But again, Pam, thank you so much for your time. Anyone like to speak in favor of this? Possibly opposition? Seeing one council may have a recommendation. Look at the adoption of uh, 1234. Second. Good morning. Vice President Oliver Davis. Nay. Council Member White. Nay. Mr. Furlick. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. <coughs> Mr. Henry Davis. Nay. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furley. Aye. Dr. Varner. Aye. President Dieter. Aye. That would be six ayes, three nays. 1240. Please. Mr. Borton. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, appointing an agent slash negotiator to represent the Common Council and addressing the advisory city negotiating team for the 2012 Fire Department and Police Department negotiation. I believe we had a committee report today on this. We discussed the pros and cons. What happened? Mr. Brother, uh, there was a favorable recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Council Member White. My name is Karen White. I reside at 1912 Melvin White, City of South Bend. Um, as you are aware, this is a negotiating year with a negotiating teams representing the sworn members of the South Bend Fire Department and the South Bend Police Department. A memo was sent to each of you on May 2nd, which outlines the process and the need to have a positive and productive negotiation. Resolution 1240 will appoint the council agent and chief negotiator for these negotiations who has a proven track record of successfully working with the city's advisory teams and the union representatives. This resolution will appoint the council agent and chief negotiator. I ask for your support as we move forward and we know that we will have hopefully a very successful negotiations with the police department as well as the fire department. If you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to address those. Thank you. Questions? Anyone like to speak in favor of 1240 as we sit here right now? Any opposition? May I have a recommendation from our council? Move for the adoption of 1240. Second. For 40. Uh, Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furlick. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furlick. Aye. Dr. Varner. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. President Davis. Aye. Nine aye. Thank you. 1241, please. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, approving the Minority Slash Women Business Enterprise Utilization Board's recommendation for the engagement of diversity compliance officers. Committee report. Well, uh, the Community Economic Development Committee, as well as the Personal Finance Committee, met this afternoon in a joint session. Uh, as a result, 1241 was sent to the Council. Council uh, with some favorable recommendations. With some caveats. With some caveats. <laughs> and the caveats, do we need to find them at this point? Uh, just advisory that the enabling legislation that initially established the MBEWBE ordinance uh, would be looked at to address the two concerns raised by Council No concerns were uh, legal, A, 
structure of the board with regard to Secretary? Secretary, <laughs> without the resources being added to it. And I did have the opportunity to talk with uh, Mr. Martineau um, after the twenty meetings, and he's very open to that discussion. Okay. Oh. Thank you. That's what the caveat. Yes, I'm going to ask Mr. Tony Fitz to uh, join me as he is the chairperson of the diversity board. I uh, would like to present to you the council resolution 12-41, which takes the next step in carrying out the provision of ordinance 10081, which was passed by the common council on April 12, 2011. Um, we have created, we the administration, along with the council, a nine-member minority women business enterprise utilization board. This board, since November 10, 2011, uh, has met uh, 12 times. Those meetings have lasted anywhere from two to three hours. Um, the board has had a number of outreach efforts. One was at the natatorium. They attended a fair on the campus of St. Mary's. They have worked through the ordinance. And I'm going to ask Mr. Phelps to this. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I said that. Oh, we do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to, uh, okay. one day, to briefly walk uh, the council through uh, the board's uh, efforts in terms of advertising for uh, the diversity officer and or firm, but also to share with you the process. And at this time, Tony will walk you through that process. Thank you, Councilman White. My name is Anthony Fitz. Address is 1201 East Fairview Avenue in South Bend. Uh, I have been a member, I am a member of the Diversity and Utilization Board, for lack of a better word, for the full title, and was appointed president of that board. So I'm speaking on behalf of our, our, the other board members tonight. Uh, we have, as White pointed out, met 12 times and done other outreach meetings. The purpose of our board through the ordinance is to affect putting it well to put into effect two primary initial tasks. One is the engagement of or hiring of a diversity compliance officer, and the second is to draft a utilization plan that would be then employed by the city. Uh, our task and our efforts have been ongoing since we first got together in our first meetings in November of two thousand and eleven and in those meetings, we have moved towards the process of drafting an RFP, request for proposal, to solicit uh, respondents for this task. Uh, working with Mr. Gary Gillott, uh, the ex-director of public works and now as a citizen volunteer to our board, we have put together, uh, again with his help, the RFP, circulated that uh, in March with the two advertisements that were required. Uh, on April the 10th, actually on April 3rd, we had an initial uh, pretty big conference. Uh, several respondents did uh, attend that meeting, and we opened all the bids that were received on April 10th. On that date, we, we opened the bids to find there were four respondents to the RFP. Uh, Michigan Area Chamber of Commerce was one. Buyers Consulting Group was another. Uh, Alice Williams, as a sole entrepreneur, was a third, and Trinal Inc. of Chicago was a fourth. We had, along with the RFP, distributed a scoring matrix, a 100-point scoring matrix that would be used for evaluating the respondents. Uh, and through that uh, matrix and the scoring that was turned in by all the board members, the top two respondents to the RFP were uh, selected to be by the scoring that came out of this China Inc. out of Chicago and Buyers Consulting Group, who I'm sure the name is familiar to most and his involvement, Lee Buyers, it is involvement with the Croc Center here in town. We had, uh, by a vote of the group, had agreed that we would interview the top two respondents, Buyers and China Inc. Uh, we had those interviews in early April. And again, did the rescoring again using the same point matrix, uh, the same 100 point scoring matrix. And the final result of that scoring came out that, uh, uh, China Link of Chicago was selected to be our board's recommendation to council for this role. Thank you. 
I now would like to ask Mr. Mark Neal to come up to the controller as you have been able to work through the ordinance. Uh, the administration has a very critical role in ensuring that the, uh, the board as well as the plan is being advanced. And it's been a joy to work with Mr. Neal as well as with members of the board, the diversity board, but also with members of the administration as we collectively uh, have worked through the ordinance to ensure that we have such a board to really address a critical issue within our city. At this time, I'm going to ask Mark to come and give a very brief overview in regards from his perspective, the administration's role, and also the need to have such board, such as the diversity board and ultimately the diversity officer. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council Member White, uh, Mark Neal, City Controller. Uh, as noted, uh, Gary Gillard is a citizen volunteer has done a terrific job of supporting the efforts of the board to get us to this point, uh, along with uh, uh, Jan Hall, Director of, of Human Resources, and Phil Custard, our purchasing manager, who has spent a, a great deal of time as well trying to support the board in their efforts to uh, get to this point to uh, uh, have a, a diversity compliance officer identified, and this, uh, I should say diversity compliance office, officer firm identified that we think can uh, best support uh, the efforts so that we can uh, begin uh, quickly, I would hope, after uh, further uh, uh, Board of Works and Council action to support uh, the initiatives of, of, of compliance, but more importantly, education and training so that we can begin the process of measuring how well we're doing but uh, more focused on how we'll be improving the process of working with minority and women-owned businesses as uh, they compete for uh, city contracting opportunities. Thank you. Uh, I've got uh, one left. Oliver, you have a question? Yes. Um, earlier today, um, uh, Mr. Mary Miller talked about the unions and the labor, labor unions not necessarily being a part of the selection process and everything else. Can you address how going forward that could be corrected. And so because a part of the uh, legislation did address the involvement of the labor union. Um, the, uh, the selection process was uh, uh, handled by the board, uh, by the board as it's been constituted. Uh, but uh, we're certainly looking for input from any uh, citizen or group's involvement. I spoke to Mr. Miller after the, uh, after the committee session today and certainly want to be sure that we are, in fact, very proactive in what we can do regarding labor groups in, in uh, purposes of the, the enactment of this ordinance and the work with trial in their education and training as well as the compliance aspect of it. Is that responsive to your question, Councilman Davis? I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm good with that. And so everything is for one year, and then after one year, then they will be bringing a report back to their um, uh, us to let them know who they have decided to be the director of this program? The, the, uh, the uh, ordinance has been written is for a one-year period, which at that time would be reviewed again for a renewal or however we might look at extending the program into a second year. Okay. Yes. I'm good. And Mark, the, uh, initially was in the budget of 67.5, I believe? That's correct. Absolutely correct. And, and that will be for the company out of Chicago? Uh, is that it up an amount not to exceed that amount. They, right. they, they may engage others to support them in their efforts. <laughs> but the amount but not that, to exceed the $67,500. But for, that, just for clarification, that was originally written in as a person to be in the budget, or was that for the program? No, that was an appropriation that gave latitude for either a okay. individual oh. or in, on staff or on contractual. Yeah. Okay. In, in the budget, it actually was done as, right. as an outside consultant, but okay. it could be handled wherever. So then it, 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 you were to continue with the relationship with the uh, people in Chicago, then that would be a yearly, and like Oliver said, that would come back to the council if you're going to continue that specific That's entity correct. or if they hire, if they find someone in, in this area. It can just, I guess it could be a revolving or changing entity as we go. That's, that's, that's correct. It's set up for one year, and that the contract for one year, uh, and that we would look in the, for the 2013 budget uh, to, again, look at both funding it and then making the decision again through the diversity utilization board with council approval as to what we should be doing uh, in 2013. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Valerie. You say one year. Um, 
not one calendar year, not June to June. It's June to uh, December 31st, correct? Uh, the funding is through December 31st. I, I have to, I'm looking at council attorneys to see how that final language was drafted. Is it goes to does the contract go to December 31 of 2012, or does it actually extend beyond the way? Well, it would go beyond. Again, that actual language would be in the second resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And if I could just add, uh, in response to Councilmember Oliver Davis, there is a part of the enabling legislation uh -huh. with regard to the unions and the trades that Mr. Uh, Neal's department would do outreach with regard <coughs> to training and, and all of that, uh -huh. and that has quarterly updates to the council. Okay. And uh, when they finish or their recommendation uh, for, for whichever we go with the future for the second year and beyond, that person is, is recommended to come back to us, yes. and then we make a decision whether or not we want to continue with that individual person or with the um, consultant. Yeah. I'm at peace. All right. Thank you. Anyone in the audience like to speak in favor of this at this time? Opposition. Council, your call here. Prior to taking the vote, I would like to personally thank former council member Timothy Ross for That's really, good. along with other sponsors of the original ordinance, of moving this very important initiative forward for our community. As we look at minority and women businesses, uh, I think it's very important that we as a city <coughs> that we do all we can to ensure that we have full participation. And because of uh, council member Ross. Um, passion and desire. Uh, I think we're at the point that we're at now. So I would point the record to recognize his work that he's done to get us to this point. Can you make a motion? Oh, I would like to make the motion that we uh, adopt resolution 12-41. And I have got yeah. second. Second. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, want to add to that. Mr. Furley. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furley. Aye. Dr. Vernon. Aye. Vice President <coughs> Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. President Deaton. Aye. Nine. Aye. President Deaton, may I? Uh, really quick, I wanted before we took the vote, I wanted to ask. Uh, clearly, we need to revisit the ordinance again uh, and make some changes. How soon? And we can actually follow up on. I will wait for the chair. Hey! Okay. Thank you. We do not have any first readings. Do we have any unfinished business? Uh, yes, sir, uh, President Dieter. Uh, Oliver, give me to the point earlier about the bridge and Chamber Street. Thank you, Oliver. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, I pass it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> but really quick, you know, in my heartedness, um, in all seriousness as well, uh, Council Member uh, uh, Tim Scott and I went out to Beacon Heights uh, a couple of days ago this past weekend and Walked over the grounds and uh, wanted to see, you know, what we've seen for years. I'm uh, uh, complaining that this doesn't happen. Uh, I appreciate uh, him being the residential neighborhood chairman, uh, but also as we move further along with some of our apartment complexes and uh, housing projects that we have here, that we begin to look at an overview for all of them because I think all of them suffer from the same symptoms. A lot of it has to do with poverty, you know, and the way things are being viewed. Uh, however, I think that some of the things can be rectified in similar fashion, so much as like dumping the trash properly, meaning the company that comes and dumps the trash, not the residents, you know, and make sure that cleanup is properly being addressed in those areas. So, um, as a response to what we saw this past weekend, and I'm sure you talked with uh, Kathy mm -hmm. as well, yep. I think that it'll be uh, in our best interest to be a bit more proactive in and actually co enforcement to go out there and uh, look at the property and make sure that they are writing citations rather than warnings, because this is not the first time. I think Council Member White my, and myself, as well as uh, past member uh, uh, Tom Rouse, had a series of meetings with the same uh, ownership, and we never got any resolve out of it. So at this point, I think that it's necessary that we begin to write citations and let them know that we're serious. Uh, I don't think there is a resident on God's green earth to live in such filth. And I mean it uh, wholeheartedly filth. Uh, it, it reeks of a smell when you walk on the ground. It's like it's another world. And uh, and I'm not blaming it because all on the residents. I think that it has a lot to do with the management of the facility. 
Uh, reason why I was, I mean, my on this trip was because I was contacted by a resident, or actually a couple of residents that live over there, and they began to speak to me about the conditions in which their apartment complex, their apartments are, uh, are in, uh, meaning the amount of mold that are going through the wall, uh, the conditions of some of the appliances and different things that are already in the apartments that they don't necessarily bring in with them or leave with when they, uh, are gone. And so, uh, again, I, I think that that needs to be addressed. And, and if it's not addressed, uh, I'll probably get back on one of my rants and my soapbox issues again about it because I don't think anyone, no one should have to live in, in such deal. No one. And so, uh, hopefully we'll get some attention from Cold and Cold will be able to go out and, uh, and do their job and dress it properly. Um, I've also met with the chamber and other members of the community as well about the tax abatement issues uh, that are before us, not the tax abatement that we just passed, but the ordinance that needs to be revisited, and we're going to revisit. So uh, in between now and uh, after June 15th, that's when we get the report from uh, CED and Don Inc., we will begin a, a series of hearings before and after throughout the community to, to talk about how great these things are, but also look at other communities that are similar to us. One that we brought up was Indianapolis. They're not similar in, in such respects, but they are a part of Indiana. The other community I think was, uh, it was Pittsburgh, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, given the fact that they have the same Rustville history that South Bend has, and also transforming their time into a high tech field, and also using some of the colleges that are in their locality to produce some outcomes. And so as we begin this, uh, this process of a, uh, changing or, uh, or enhancing our tax abatement, I look to the uh, council as well as to members of the, of the committee, the C D committee, for any any ideas, thoughts on what we could do to make sure that this uh, tax abatement uh, uh, ordinance is addressed in the fashion that we all are happy with. And so that is mine, President Dieter. President Dieter? Well, I'll just respond to him. So in regards to, to Beacon Heights, we're worried about the ownership not picking up the trash correctly? I, you know, it's not them not picking the trash, but they think that it's not being taken care of properly. Uh, it just go out there. I mean, just, you don't have to go out there and just, just, just sniff the air. <laughs> it just doesn't, it's, it's still, it's still. So would you like to get, have another meeting, I guess, uh, under Councilman yeah. Scott, would, would you do that, set that up? Yeah, we, we, we ownership? Can. Yeah, I'd like to comment on that. Um, thank you. I'll refer to the so, Okay, so I, 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 Let's go with them to take them on that, and then if you don't mind, I'll come back. Well, if you watch it, I'll come back. I'm a piece. Yeah, go ahead. Thank yeah. you, VP. Uh, <laughs> um, You're welcome. Along that lines, um, Henry and I did walk to Deacon Heights, and um, there is an accountability that needs to happen. We have started on it with, with Courtyard and, and looking at some of the other landlord property management issues uh, through the Residential Neighborhoods Committee. Uh, it definitely is the interest of that committee uh, to make changes. Um, you know, there is a correlation to our violence. There is a correlation to our youth violence and, and the crime that's going on when we have landlords, property management, collecting the money and not caring what unlawful and unruly behavior happens uh, in our neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, they... I've said it time and time again, everybody needs to be a good neighbor. And uh, it starts with that leadership where um, the landlords and the property managers and owners uh, step up to help um, police and basically citizen police and involvement in um, cutting down the crime and the, the bad behavior and raising the quality in the bar. Um, just we, we had a joint committee meeting on courtyards. Uh, between Dr. Fred's Health and uh, Safety Committee and Residential. There are improvements. Um, there are implementations that are being made by the owners, which um, I think the city and I are pretty proud that the owners have stepped up and taken responsibility. There is going to be better. Uh, there's off-duty officers working there more hours and longer. So and we're actually going to be collecting the data on calls for services and to track that there are improvements being made. I was there Saturday after Beacon Heights. It is, it is clean. They have fixed the lights. Um, I was pretty impressed how well the courtyard looks. But 
time will tell. I'm a good old boy from Missouri, and you got to show me. So, uh, but it's something that I think we can do here is raise that bar, uh, is say to the landlords and the property management that the bar needs to be raised in South Bend. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, President Dieter, um, just like in our next um, meeting, if we can have an update um, in our committee meetings on the grass and yards and see where they are with um, keeping up with all of our yards. We've had a rainy season and the grass is coming up and I wanted to see but from cold um, regarding that, just to check in with that part of it. Also, when it comes to transfer, um, in one of our previous meetings we had a couple, a few weeks ago, we had a representative from one of our apartments, a Prairie Apartments, to come in to talk with us regarding the transfer route. And I just wanted to update that they did come and, and the transfer route has been adjusted to meet the needs of the um, um, Prairie um, Apartments throughout. So they did work out a situation that is much more beneficial to all of the residents who live out there and they've adjusted the routes a little bit closer to that area. So as we said, always can complain about some things. It's nice to know that those were hurt and that that has been taken care of. And on Thursday, I have a meeting. We're going to try to have um, the new um, shelters in the next few weeks over at the South Walmart for um, the transfer right there. That's the next project we want to get off my head before this summer. So you should hear a report from that side complete because we still shopping out there. Right, so would you like to have that update under uh, Report of City Officers with Catherine Topol? That's fine. Yes. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you very much. And um, that one, and um, yeah, Parks as well. I think Parks is there. Parks? Yeah, Parks as well. Parks? Parks? Parks Country Grants. Yeah, Parks. It's being transferred. And I think it's Jim Myers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, who's Parks? 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 We can update them. I will take care of that. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's proceed to privilege of the floor before we open up the privilege of the floor at the end of this meeting. If you would like a council member to talk to you, they would have to come down. We ask that you do not come up on these steps at the end of the meeting. So privilege of the floor, you go up to that microphone. We need your name and address to you talk for three minutes on anything other than anything that was on the agenda tonight. If there's something specific, you would like the council to get back to you, or I believe there are forms up there. So just sign in what you want the council to look into, and I will sign that to a committee member, and we will get back to you. If you just want to come up there and then you have three minutes to do so. Tim Scott will be timing you. Jesse Davis, 1333 East Calvert, South Bend. Um, I've been following a story about uh, the uh, demotion of the police chief and the firing of our communications director. And I know for uh, several weeks the man said he couldn't speak about this uh, due to a, a federal investigation, things of that nature. So there hasn't been a whole lot out in the news. Well, apparently, after reading an article yesterday, um, I was a little bit alarmed all of a sudden the mayor speaking about this. Um, he supposedly had saved these people from criminal charges and prison time and so forth. So um, I'm still a little puzzled about it. I, I, I don't agree with the things that are being said. And most of the council members and the mayor himself during campaigning and so forth keep touting transparency uh, not only from the mayor's office to the council but also to us citizens. Um, I'm a citizen, a taxpayer, and a business owner, and I think we all have a right to know exactly what happened in this scenario. We don't need to hear any tapes necessarily. Uh, if that's possible, fine. If not, no big deal. But we need the truth. We need the facts. We need to know if, in fact, there were people that were being racial who are police officers. Why were they not reprimanded? You know, what happened to the people who were involved? And I implore the entire council and, and demand as a citizen that you launch an investigation into this. Obviously, the federal investigation is now over. That's been said many times. We still aren't getting the transparency and the truth. So I think it's your job to the people of South Bend to investigate this 
and find out what the truth is and exactly why these demotions and firings took place. Thank you, sir. Cammy around 222 East Diversity, South Bend. I represent a group of people called Concerned Citizens. And I'm also here to talk to the topic of uh, the emotional police chief and the firing of a communication person. Everybody got an idea, every person is a lawyer now, and I don't read it all. I don't read it all. But the guy that writes a wiretap and actually works in the game. Uh, we're stuck. I got all of it stuck on my desk. But the bottom line is, the gentleman just said that we don't want to hear the tapes. Yes, we don't. And there's something on those tapes that's very, very wrong. And when you took an oath, you took an oath, one hand on the Bible and you raised the other hand, that you would govern all the people. Well, the people down there want to know. If we got police officers that's doing something they shouldn't be doing, if we got city officials doing something that should be doing, we the people want to know. Because when I get pulled over on the streets of the city of South Bend, who am I? Am I Sam Brown, a citizen? Why am I? Why am I? Why am I? I would hope I'm Sam Brown, a citizen. Now, this is very important, because I trust the guy when he pulled me over. He's going to give me a citation. He's going to arrest me, but I'm hoping I will go home to my family safe. But this other guy that's on the tape, what if he pulled me over one night? What would he do? So we got to clean this up, and we got to bring it forth. I committed the mayor to see this out there. Because he's running around, he's contacted people that can't help him. One minute, sir. Thank you, sir. He's contacted people that really can't help him. And he's saying, now, look, I'm, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, and I've done that, but it's all in the best city you've ever seen. I don't agree with that. Thank you. Good, man. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Ron Daniel, and I reside at 2404 Fredrickson Street in South Bend. My concern is, for the past couple of years, I have listened as people speak, and I've heard the mayor tonight says his concern is that we, the citizen, uh, and the police department learn to trust and communicate with each other. Well, I have done all of this here, and I will continue to do so. Uh, I've learned about the neighborhood watch and crime programs. I've gotten involved. My problem is when there is a situation, and this has happened numerous of times, I follow procedures by calling the South Bend Police Department. I have talked to numerous machines. I have been told to leave a message. We will take your name and your address. I've also been told that, well, don't worry. You don't know we're there, but we're there. They're watching. Some things will be done. Again, this has been going on for a couple of years. I'm concerned about the children, not only in my neighborhood, but other neighborhoods. We talked about the police patrol on bikes, on feet. We want to see them out on feet. We want to be able to speak to them, learn, learn their names so they can know our names, learn their faces. None of this has happened. I would like to know when will this happen, if it... At all will it happen. And again, you know, when I call for a policeman, how long do I have to wait? And what what is it you're waiting to sit back and look for? You know, what are you looking for? You, you see it. You see the things that I and other people are complaining about. I don't, I don't understand your procedures, and I do want to know. I am, I'm raising a grandchild, and I am so scared. I am so scared of what will happen, what's going to happen. You know, if I call the police, you're not going to, please, I don't mean any disrespect, you're not, you're not there. One minute. So would somebody give me an answer to some of these questions that I've been asking for two years? Thank you. Thank you. President, 
My name is Carla Core. My address is 1402 Lawndale, Niles, Michigan. Um, I'm a certified arborist, which means I own and operate a tree service, and my credentials don't mean anything until it matters. Um, you will want to speak in the mic, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I'm here for two parts, but first I'd like to apologize. My issue seems so entirely petty compared to all the big issues that you folks have, and I am I truly am sorry. Um, on May 1st, we were removing a tree in the historical district of South Bend. Um, we've been licensed to work in the city for 19 years. We run probably the most premier tree service here. Uh, I totally care about everything about my company and the integrity with which it's ran. Chief Inspector Brian Haygood from Code Enforcement visited our, our site and was acting in a very unprofessional and unbusinesslike manner. It was very aggressive and uncalled for. I can't even explain why it happened. My crew of five were giving Mr. Haygood all the answers that he required. Um, his attitude continued to get worse and worse as the meeting went on. He said that we were not licensed, however we were, and um, ticketed us for $50 for not having a small arborist plate on every single vehicle at the site. That is the true reason that I'm here. Uh, the ordinance for arborists is 4-19, and if you go up to the business licensing office with Michelle Adams and you request that uh, application and that ordinance, nowhere on there does it say that you have to have a plate affixed to every single vehicle prominently if you are going to operate in the city limits. Um, I've been licensed for 19 years, and I didn't know it, and I certainly want to follow the laws. Um, I well, done, thank you. I've contested the um, ticket, but I would like to see a change in the ordinance for um, current and future arborists so that we have the laws in front of us, simply put, so that we can see and follow the law. Um, I have information from Mr. Vordy that has the, has the ordinances here and so that you can see where the errors are. Um, and the letter of complaint for Mr. Haygood's um, behavior. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anyone else like to speak to the council? President Dan, before you close. This is, we're going to close. Anyone else like to speak to the council this time? Thank you. Seeing none, we are adjourned. President Dan. Uh, I mean, I mean, this is a serious situation. Mr. Gill came here not only for that, but she was a part of the community. Uh, I'm going to jump in the community.